Hello everyone, I'm Sean Fonello, I'm working at Perceptive.io In this talk I'm going to introduce you HyperDebt, Learning Depth from Structure Light Without Matching. We conducted this work while our team was at Microsoft Research. So, I'm pretty sure everyone in this room knows that 3 d sensors are becoming ubiquitous. Soon we will have them in our mobile phones where we can scan objects and environment. Laptops already make use of them and they're enabling new interaction technologies. Augmented reality and virtual reality by definition require contents that are generated in full 3D. And finally, complex systems such as robots and autonomous cars need to map their surroundings in order to accomplish their tasks. There is a lot of related work up there. Here I'm trying to give you only the most relevant pointers. All the details are in the paper, of course. So, the simplest way to generate depth maps is to make use of RGB cameras, and they can be in a stereo or in a monocular configuration. However, these methods struggles when we have textureless scenes, and they don't really generate high accurate depth maps because they're usually very noisy. So, we are not going to consider them for this talk. Alternatives make use of active illumination, for example, structural light, both temporal and spatial. And also recently very popular are time-of-flight technologies such as Kinect V2. Let's try to compare pro and cons of these technologies now. Temporal structural light such as uh, Intel F200 for example has a very cheap way to compute uh, depth maps. It is a so-called O1 algorithm. However, the hardware complexity is higher and the range is very limited. Moreover, they also require multiple shots of the same scene in order to produce a single depth map, which means that there are a lot of issues when you have moving objects, objects or moving cameras. Time of flight technologies, for example, Kinect V2, again is a whole one algorithm. However, here we have the so-called multipath interference, which completely kills this technology when you want very precise measurements of the scene. There is a lot of work going on to try to solve this problem, but right now there are no general solutions. We like spatial structural light, and the reason is it's very cheap. You can use off-the-shelf components, it's just an IR camera plus a dot pattern projector. But there is a little problem, which is the computational cost. It's huge. Indeed, people used to cast the special structural light problem into a stereo matching one. So for those that don't know what stereo matching is, usually you have a right and a left image, and you want to infer depth using a disparity map. And the way it works, you have a pixel on the left image, and you test multiple hypotheses on the right image until you find the most correlated one. And you can understand it is a very demanding operation, and this is one of the reasons why Kinect runs a low resolution at 30 frames per second. Now, with HyperDept, we want to completely change the way stereo matching is done. We cast the stereo matching problem into a classification and regression task, and we deliver a all one algorithm capable to achieve very high accurate results we compare to any technology around. We have long range and we solve many problems such as quantization. And the algorithm is able to run at 1000 frames per second. We com comparing this with our previous work, learning to be that camera was designed to be a very specific scenario where only hands and faces were involved. It was reflectivity dependent there, and the range was very short. With hyperdepth, we don't have any of this problem. So now, let's go back to spatial structure light. As anticipated before, the setup is very simple. We have an IR camera and a dot pattern projector. The only assumption we, we make here is that the IR camera and the projector are calibrated and rectified. For this work, we use basically a Kinect V1. Now, the image that usually gives, Kinect gives you is what we call your current observation. But Kinect has also a hidden image, which here we call reference pattern, which is basically the pattern that comes from the projector. As anticipated before, now if you look at a particular section of these images, we see that this image shows all this dot structure. And as anticipated before, if you want to predict depth for a particular pixel, people before used to cast this problem into a stereo matching task. And again, we have to test multiple hypotheses until we find the most correlated one. And this is really expensive. 
With HyperDebt, we change this. We give a different perspective. We cast everything into a pattern recognition task. So the main intuition is that the reference pattern is fixed, and we will exploit this. However, it's very hard to do so, and it has never been done before. So let's try to understand what it means a reference pattern is fixed. Let's consider again our example, and we want to predict the disparity of a pixel at a particular XR coordinate. Now, all we have to realize is that the particular dot structure at the XR coordinate in the reference pattern is going to be always at a fixed XL position. So, at runtime, instead of trying multiple hypotheses, all we have to do is just to recognize the patch structure, and then the disparity is obtained for free. So how we formalize this problem? Well, given the reference pattern that we can always estimate, we can assign a class label for each pixel. Here, for example, we show them color-coded. The way we assign these classes is to say that the class is equal to the current x-coordinate. So at runtime, this simplifies the problem because once we have a pixel and we recognize the class C, the disparity is simply the current class minus the current x. And there is no need for stereo matching. This is just a lookup approach, such as in, te in temporal structure light. Now, the next question is, how do we actually encode this pattern? Because it's not trivial to build a lookup table. And we also want to be robust against image distortions, slanted surfaces, changes, and so on. And moreover, we want to have a whole one algorithm. We don't want to be dependent on the patch size, and we don't want to be dependent on the disparities. To do so, given an image and a pixel, we encode this pattern in a random forest model where we traverse the tree just sampling random, sampling just sparse offsets, so we don't look at the whole patch. And once we reach a leaf, we store these class labels that are used directly to infer disparities, just saying that the disparity is the current class minus x. To further increase robustness, we use a random forest per scan line. Now, the way we populate this random forest, we first have to generate ground truth data. And to do so, we use a very accurate but offline stereo matching algorithm, which is patch match stereo by Blayer et al. So given ground truth disparities that are continuous values now, we can simply invert the, our equation and say that the class is equal to the disparity plus x. And now we have continuous values, so we can also achieve some pixel precision. The way we train this random forest is pretty standard. All the details are in the paper. The only difference I would say here is that we change the objecting function from classification to regression after the first nine levels. At runtime, again, given a pixel, we use this random forest, we have a set of candidates classes, we aggregate classes that are between 0 0.2 disparities, so it's a pixel disparities, and, and then at the end we, we get the one with the highest probability. Notice that if we have a 15 level trees, we only need 15 pixel differences to predict a disparity, which is less than one NCC score evaluation between se two 7x7 seven seven patches. And this is a no one algorithm because it's independent on the window size and the number of disparities, and it's fully parallelizable over pixels. We don't have to wait for any propagation steps such as in patch match, for example. Here we show the running times use on 1.3 megapixel images using a Titan X. If you have a configuration of three trees with 12 levels, we are able to run everything with one and one millisecond, which means 1,000 frames per second, and the disparity error is just 0.1 pixels. Now, let's take a look at some results. Here we compare hyperdepth with patch match, which is actually our ground truth. These are all images from the test set, so the algorithm has never seen these kind of images. You can see how our algorithm produces better ages, where basically we don't have any edge fattening effect, for example. And also, it produces more complete depth maps. Here again, another example, where you can appreciate again the quality of the boundaries. We run many comparisons and many tests with all the available technology we had in the lab. And here I summarize basically what the main problems with other cameras, with other cameras are. Kinect V1 suffer from heavy quantization. RealSense F200 has a very limited range. It's really good between 20 and 50 centimeters, but then basically stops working. RealSense R200 is very noisy. Patchmatch overall gives very good results, but it's very slow. 
Again, regarding the quantization, here we have a couple of images of a ball and a chair. And if we zoom in some particular section, you can see how Kinect is affected heavily by these layers. Instead, our results look more like a ball and a coin of a chair there. Regarding ages, most of the time we do a pretty good job where we don't merge fingers, for example, in this case. But there are few failure cases that actually have been solved with the second iteration of the algorithm where we used to shrink the object too much, like in the last case. We, of course, have also many quantitative comparisons. Here, I want to just give a takeaway message is that we are currently bound by the precision of the ground truth here, since our precision is like 0.05 subpixels. And when we compare our hyperdepth with all the other technologies, we always achieve the best error here. And the noise characterization is really good because it's basically the one similar to Kinect V1, which is great for object scanning. And this is our last experiment, where we scan multiple objects using Kinect Fusions. And, and again, we compared all these other cameras. Hyperdepth gave the best visual results and also the ones with the lowest error. And this is mostly due to the fact that we have a high resolution sensor, 1.3 megapixels, and we have no quantization at all. The other sensors, we already saw why they have problems such as quantization and noise. In the case of Kinect V2, instead, here the main problem is multipath. And you can see how these multipath effects cause objects to be completely shrinked. To conclude, Hyperdepth is a breakthrough in structural light division where we cast the stereo matching problem into a path recognition task. We achieved state-of-the-art results using a fully parallelizable algorithm at the same compute of a time-of-flight camera. Thank you.